hello friends and fashion lovers welcome and welcome back thank you for all your love and support and thank you for clicking on this video my name is Esther and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this baby dress it's a classic piece and in the process of making this dress I'll be touching on how to add a button plackets to your basic bodice pattern and how to do puff sleeve or gathered sleeve without doing the slash and spread method let's get right into the making of this dress firstly the material you will need are you need your prints fabric and you also need a contrasting color to edge your sleeve you will need a lining but the lining is optional then you will need a sleeve pattern and a basic bodice pattern right here i have dressed my pattern out and I've added my necessary seaming allowance. A link to how to draft the basic bodice pattern will be in the description box. Now let's go ahead and add the plackets to our back bodice. You can do this to the front bodice but I choose the back bodice. Yes, firstly you start by measuring your buttons. Yes, the width of your button has a major role to play in your placket. So right here, I have about half an inch. So that being done, I am going to go ahead from my center back, I'm going to mark half an inch away from my center back as my placket. Yes, your button has a great role to play. You can go as much as adding three quarter of an inch to your placket. But your button determines your placket. So with that, I'm going to mark where my placket will be. That being done, if I just wanted a simple one that I didn't have to worry about the fessing, I would go ahead and just add my seaming allowance. But for my fessing, you make sure that you mark a line that is two times your Placket and that will be your back facing when folded over it should be able to Cover where your button holes or your buttons will sit. It should exceed it a little bit So that is your facing and now it's time to add seaming allowance Yes, I'm going to be using lining to finish it even if I'm not using a lining to finish it I would have to have a little bit of fabric to bend it in and stitch so you could do half inch you could do one centimeter so now when you're cutting with your lining you are cutting on your center back you don't need to add extra when cutting on your lining you just be cutting directly from your center back so let me just trim it so that you can see so this is how it is. You have your center back, you add your placket determined by your buttons and you add your back facing. I have traced my desired length of sleeve out and I'm going to add notches. Yes, notches is important and you are going to ensure that when you're using your pattern to cut your fabric, you include these notches and i'm doing it both for my sleeve and for my basic bodice after placing your notches use your pattern and cut out your fabric so here are my pieces i have this black fabric to edge my sleeve for my sleeve i place my basic sleeve and ensure to have about five inch away from the center fold my sleeve here is on fold and I have 5 inch away and I'm going to be gathering that. And this black fabric is 2 inch in height and the width is about the round sleeve of the child. I'll be using the black fabric to edge the sleeve. My center front is cut on fold. Yes, my front pattern is cut on fold and I'm doing that for my fashion fabric and also for my lining piece now to my back piece please pay attention my lining is cut exactly from the side to the center back no extra allowance was added 
so like you would have on your basic bodice without any zipper allowance or button allowance just make sure that you cut it exactly it should stop at the center back just fold the rest of your fabric away and make sure it's at the center back I hope my explanation is good enough so you're going to be folding it over don't worry you get a clearer picture of it when I start stitching but as for my fashion fabric I make sure that I cut with my placket, my back facing and the seaming allowance so here is a look at it see my lining stop at the center back no extra and I have two piece for that and for my fashion fabric I have two piece for it as well but I use my whole pattern to cut my fashion fabric and I didn't forget to put my notches please put those notches it helps simplify your stitching process I'm going to set that aside then the skirts you know the skirt length is your desired dress length minus your bodice length plus some seaming and hemming allowance yeah I have a lining piece that is three inch shorter than the fashion fabric and the width is two times the waist measurement the width is two times the desired waist measurement right here I'm going to start with stitching the sleeve remember those notches that I asked you to add I'd added them and you're going to go ahead and gather up your sleeve you're doing this both for the sleeve head and the down part of your sleeve you're going to gather them up to the original measurements of the sleeve after that it's time to edge the sleeve so I'm going to use this 2 inch width strip to edge it but before then you're going to make sure that you evenly distribute your gathers on this while pinning it down after stitching it down fold over that contrasting fabric once and fold it over again and stitch it in place just go close to the edge as possible then you should have something like this you repeat the same step for the second sleeve and when done set the sleeve aside it's time to start working on the bodice the bodice make sure that you have your fashion fabric and your lining fabric place the back and front right side facing each other you are going to go ahead and stitch it at the shoulder after stitching now place your lining piece on your fashion fabric right side facing yes you should have something that looks like this remember where you had notched for seaming allowance if you refer to your pattern you are going to fold that over to your lining see you had already made provision for it to go over while well, your lining piece is just exactly where the center back is so you are going to bring the lining piece forward don't worry it will all make sense soon and pin that in place and you take to your sewing machine and stitch that down please use your allocated seaming allowance if you have used half an inch you are going to end up trimming that down after stitching now when it's adjusted you should have it look like this go ahead and stitch the neckline but just for the side I'm going to be making my button holes I'm going to add a fusible interface just for stability to it so I'm going to iron on this fusible interface before stitching the neckline 
it's a matter of choice if you have quite a thick fabric you can skip that part but i just feel that it makes my buttonhole making process much easier after stitching your bodice will look something like this you can go ahead and under stitch the neckline so that it stays put by moving the raw edge towards the lining while you stitch so here is how my bodice looks you can see the fusible interface i added if you refer to your pattern you should have exactly your center back plus your placket that you added without extra because you have stitched the rest so if you have done this congratulations you've been able to successfully add a placket to your basic bodice If you wanted to use a different kind of lining, all you would have done is after your plaquettes, you add a half inch seaming allowance. So now that my bodice is almost ready, I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to stitch my skirt. Yes, I ended up not using this lining. I'm going to stitch the side of my skirt and hem the bottom of my skirt. I have two pieces right here so I'm just going to stitch it so I will just have one round fabric so here I'm back to my bodice I am adding sleeve to my bodice so I am just going to adjust the gathers I've made your notches will be what will guide you to do this easily so just make sure that you match your notches, the ones you have on your sleeve and the ones you have on your bodice and pin the rest in place. After pinning in place, make sure you have right side facing when pinning. Go ahead and stitch your sleeves down. After stitching your sleeve, you should have it looking like this so it's time to stitch the side of your bodice to complete this bodice so make sure you have right side facing lining to lining but before then I decided to add a back tie to it so I'm just making sure that I have about half an inch down so I don't catch it when I stitch it to the skirt. I don't catch my back tie. Then I go ahead and stitch the side of my dress, including completing my sleeve. And here my bodice is ready. So remember that I had turned my skirt into one piece of fabric infinity fabric after by stitching the sides together so i'm going to locate the center back if you have had two sides joined together you will obviously know where your center back is so, so i've hemmed the bottom of my skirt so on my center back, I'm going to go ahead and mark 3 inches down. That is how much extension I want. And I'm also noting the center. With that, I'm going to cut it to the 3 inch part. Yeah, I have a strip of fabric that is measured 1.5 inch in width. So I'm going to stitch this using quarter inch seaming allowance. That's one eighth of an inch seaming allowance. And I'm stitching it from the back. Make sure that the right side of this strip is facing the wrong side of your skirt fabric. The right side is facing the wrong side of your skirt fabric. Now you fold it to the front meaning that you're folding it to the right side of your skirt the right side of this strip should be able to 
be visible. Now go ahead and stitch that in place. If you have done this, you have successfully completed your placket. So go ahead and gather your skirts piece now. After gathering, I pin it right side facing my bodice and I'm going to stitch that to form a dress. Please don't forget when you're placing your skirt on your bodice, always make sure that you have the right side facing each other. If you have done that, your dress should be pretty much ready. The next thing you are going to do will be to add your buttons and your button holes. Yes, you can refer to your pattern to add your buttons so that you know how much seaming allowance you need. But I know there are a lot of tutorials on how to add a button. And this is the final look of the dress. On the wrong side, you have this overlapping. You can see how it looks. And on the right side, you just have the simple classic piece with buttons. I want to say thank you once again for sticking by and watching to this point. Please subscribe if you haven't done that because I'll be using this pattern to create other pieces. Thank you for watching and bye for now.